right? So our community is kind of like having a superhero shield. Yes, people, what's good and welcome back to the channel, guys. So finally, we up and running. We are good to go. We have our new little podcast called Tankscape. And what this podcast is about is just general discussions about my experiences within the reefing hobby, things that are coming up, just like general chit chat. And yeah, I'm just going to break it down from my experiences when I first started for you guys. So you can understand what went wrong, what went right, um, things I've learned along the way. And yeah, just invite little guests on so we can disagree on a couple of points, agree on a couple of points and yeah, just evolve this thing. So if you guys have any suggestions as to um, what you want to see on the podcast, any questions, any comments, just put it in the description, well, the comments below basically. And then we could talk about it. I'll just have a conversation with you about it. So, okay. So the first thing, first we want to talk about is the tmc roof habitat 60 so this tank is about 144 liters i was running out to 150 when i'm talking to people it's just easy and just it just it just makes sense and rolls off the tongue a bit better um this tank today what we're going to talk about is alkalinity and my experience with alkalinity what alkalinity is and what it does for the system and you know a bit of advice has how to maintain proper alkalinity within your reef Okay, so what exactly is alkalinity? And the best way I can describe alkalinity is the way it was explained to me, right? So alkalinity is kind of like having a superhero shield that protects the pH balance of your water by having special ions or special molecules in there that absorb any changes within the acidity of the water. Yeah, so alkalinity protects the pH of the water and absorbs any acidity that may, you know, arise in the water. That's why we keep on replenishing that. So as a corals, taking the alkalinity and that buffer we replace it so that it falls within an accepted range so they're happy and they can grow so from what i've been reading in my experiences alkalinity can be measured in two ways you can use ppm parts per million and if you're using ppm i think the range is about 125 to 200 ppm now i've never used parts per million to measure my alkalinity um, ever so I'm not really familiar with, with that. I've always used DKH, which is degrees of carbonate hardness. Uh, and the range is around from 7 DKH to around um, 12 DKH. Now, 7 is close to natural seawater. is bang on the middle there. Um, anything below that is not recommended. And I know certain people, they do run their tanks at 6.5. Yeah, hats off to you. Um, but I tend to kind of go for the, on the midway run. In 2023 and before that, around... Uh, 8.4 um, now it's 2024 um, now my tank is really stable with alkalinity alkalinity wise I'm going for that 7.5 to 8 I'm trying to go down to closer to natural seawater the seawater levels now um, with alkalinity I need to ensure that my pH is up there um, around 8.3 to 8.4 now pH is another topic we can talk about I'll probably invite a guest that has a bit more experience and knowledge around pH um, to explain exactly how to achieve it the benefits of a good and stable pH pH for a reef aquarium. So with your alkalinity guys, I always say to you, my friends or whoever messages me, if you are starting a new dose and you're starting two dose to your aquarium because your alkalinity is being um, utilized by your corals and other organisms, pick a range. Yeah, it's very important to pick a range. So if, if you have started at say 9 dkh, okay, so we'll say 9 dkh to 9.5, that's the range you want to keep. What I'll say is if you start to dose a product, start with half of what's recommended ensure that you're at that 9.5 level and test your water i'll say on the morning midday and evening to see how much alkalinity your tank has utilized and start increasing the dosage of the, the new product to prevent it from going down to nine yeah so once you've see you seen it going to like 9.1 and you still dose it's gone down to 8.7 8.6 you know you have to increase the dosage of what was recommended until you have achieved that nine and it's just about tweaking yeah so pick a range and ensure that you try your best to maintain that range don't go above what you said was your highest number and try not to go below it's all about chasing a bang on figure like 9.2 and you have to maintain that because you just be chasing numbers so 9 9.5 don't go below don't go above and you'll be sweet and your corals will thank you for it now when i first started this hobby um another godsend or way to monitor my alkalinity and to fix issues i was having with water changes so if i tested my alkalinity say on a wednesday or so and i saw it was too high i'll do a water change like a substantial water change to um to my little tank to bring my alkalinity down and if it was too low i'll do water change to bring it back up now something i didn't know about alkalinity which like you live and you learn 
um, about dosing. When I first started, I used to dose alkaline tea manually at night. I was there for a little syringe, a little like 10 mil syringe, dosing uh, a couple of mil of alkaline tea into my system, not testing anything. And the corals were dying because my alkaline tea would go up to like 13 and then my calcium would go down to 300 and it was all over the place. I didn't know what I was doing. I lost corals um, in, in that journey of me learning. So now I, I know the importance of keeping that um, range for alkalinity. Um, signs that things are not going well where you have stressed out corals polyps not extending um, you know corals bleaching corals losing tissue um, loss of algae um, coralline algae is another big one you know that might be because the water is too acidic for it to grow you know all these little things that you can recognize in your tanks when you walk past your tank do an inspection um, check to see the fish are okay check to see if any corals have any issues and if you recognize issues Start testing your water because what I found out is it's not only just one thing that causes corals to react in negative ways. It's probably a series of things that have been building up for a while. So, for example, if your lighting is incorrect and your alkalinity is too high, corals may not like that. So that's two things you have to correct. So it's very important to keep testing your alkalinity, inspect your tank to ensure that everything's okay. Another easy way to make corrections to your system that I've found in the past um, is using a KH buffer. So um, this is from Aquaforest. All you have to do is just literally just add RDI water to it. Obviously check their calculator online to see how much of the powder you need, how much RDI you need, and just mix it all up. Um, it recommends for this one in particular, if you have a correction over um, 0.5 dKH that you split the dosage up. Anything below um, 0.5 dKH, you can probably just add to your system there and there to make the correction. Now um, with this one here, um, it's quite easy. It's literally just come, it's like the soda ash kind of, kind of look just let me show you guys what it looks like you guys can see that with a soda ash in there yeah quite easy to utilize um just add it to rdi water with the correct measurements correct ratios um dose into your system and yeah correct your dkh to your accepted range just ensure that if it's above 0.5 dkh yeah you um break it up into several doses rather than doing one big dose which is not good for your system and the corals might not um thank you for it so yeah, people, that is a brief insight into alkalinity and, you know, what I've understood about alkalinity over the last, well, I'll say six, seven years I've been doing this hobby and the importance of trying to achieve stability for your alkalinity within your aquarium. I mean, the, the, the SPS and the LPS, anything that you have within your aquarium will thank you for a stable alkalinity level because it will ensure that, you know, they can start pulling all that good stuff in so they can start growing and looking nice and coloring up all right guys it's narayan for hc aquatics reef don't forget to like share subscribe guys i'll see you next time